In this video, we're going to relate everything we've discussed so far this week into one big diagram that explains how all of the theorems from multivariable calculus um, can be packaged into one big theorem called generalized Stokes theorem. That's, I mean, in my opinion, simpler to remember, um, and that works for all manifolds. Um, so we're just going to see how it works on our three using gradient curl under and uh, di uh, divergence. So the first thing is the spaces we're going to be working with. So C infinity R3 is the space of smooth functions. It's too many O's. Smooth functions on R3. Fortney um, here writes continuous functions, which doesn't actually work because we need to be able to differentiate them. So we're just going to think about smooth functions. We're also going to be working with the space of vector fields on R3. So we're going to denote this by gamma of T of R3. Gamma generally denotes what, what are called sections of a bundle. So that might this is a notation that you might see in the future. But for now, this is just going to denote vector fields in R3. And Fortney just puts the tangent bundle of R3 in place of sections of it, which also does not work because the vector field is not an element of the tangent bundle. It's a section of the tangent bundle. Um, and if you go back and review the first time we uh, introduced tangent bundles, um, or chapter two of Fortney, you can uh, revisit what a section is and how we understand vector fields as sections of vector bundles. So diagrammatically, everything that we've learned so far can be packaged up as follows. So I can take a function on R3 and I can take its gradient. This gives me a vector field on R3. I can take a vector field on R3 and I can take its curl. This gives me another vector field in R3. And this diagram that I'm going to write doesn't mean take the gradient, then take the curl. It just means that the um, range of gradient is the same as the domain of curl. So I can compose curl and gradient if I'd like, but I don't have to. Um, and then if I take the divergence of a vector field, I get a function, a smooth function on R3. OK, so now what else have we learned about? We've learned the musical isomorphisms. So if I take a vector field, it's musical, it's a flat, is a one form on R3. And if I take a function on R3, I can really think of a function as just a zero form. And then the Hodge star of a zero form is a three form on R3. Similarly, I can, you know, thinking of a function as just a zero form, I can take the identity map from functions and get a zero form on R3. And then here now I can take the exterior derivative to go from zero forms to one forms. So it'd be really great if I could complete my um, my diagram like so. So what I need is a map here. And what it turns out is I can fill this in with Hodge star composed with flat, because the flat of a vector field is a one form, and then the Hodge star of a one form is a two form. So the main question to, to ask whenever you see a diagram like this is, does the diagram commute? So this is kind of um, a generalization of the idea of, for example, of two commuting matrices in linear algebra. So can I switch the order of applying two matrices? So, uh, so, so when I apply this idea of commuting to a diagram, um, it means if I take two different paths from one spot to another, so say I start with the vector field, take its curl, then take, its, um, take the flat of its Hodge star, is that the same thing as taking the uh, flat? and then taking the exterior derivative. So going in those two directions, are they the same? So IE, um, do any two paths from point A to point B agree? So this might seem um, to be something complicated to prove, like I have to check for every single path. But actually, I just need to check for the three squares that you see here. Um, so I'll prove it square by square. Because if I can prove that flat composed with, so if I can prove, for example, that going like this is equal to going like this, then I also, and I can prove that going like this is equal to going like this, then I've also proved, for example, that um, battery is low. Then I can, I can use those proofs to show that you know, going this way and then that way is the same thing as going this way and then that way, for example. 
Okay, so getting rid of all of this pink and red stuff. Um, let's discuss the first square here. So I want to prove that this square commutes. So what does that mean? So I can take the flat of the gradient of a function, and I should be getting the same thing as if I took the exterior derivative of that function. Let me write this um, up here. OK, so this is what I want to show. Um, and let's take this equation that I want to show and rewrite it in a way that is obviously true. So this is the same thing as showing for all v vector fields v, the gradient of f flat applied to v is equal to df applied to v. Well, I know that df applied to v is just v applied to the function f. And I can actually write the gradient of v flat applied to v. This is the same thing as the transpose of the gradient of f times v. And the transpose of the gradient of f times v is just the dot product of the gradient of f. Oh, sorry, gradient of f, not just the gradient of nothing. <laughs> and then this is defined by definition. This is v applied to f. So I have shown that the gradient of f flat um, applied to any vector v is the same as df applied to the exterior derivative of f applied to the vector v. And that's true. I didn't put any restrictions on v, so I've shown what I wanted to show. So this diagram commutes. Next, I need to show that the second square commutes. So there are two ways I could do this. I could do this using um, coordinates, which you, you should feel free to do on your own. Um, and I can also do it in a coordinate free method, which is what I will show you how to do now. So there's some steps that you'll have to do on your homework. So first of all, on your homework, so what do I want to show here? I want to show that star composed with flat composed with curl of f is equal to d composed with flat composed with f or flat of f. And if I rewrite this in sort of a more uh, the way that I normally write things, this is star curl f curl f flat is equal to d of f flat. Maybe I'll put an extra parenthesis here to make it really clear. So um, in order to show this on your homework, you're going to show that curl is actually equal to so the curl of a vector field f um, is actually equal to the, okay, so it's equal to the sharp of the Hodge star of d of the flat of f. So you'll show this on your homework. Um, and then what I end up actually, yes, um, what I end up um, using this, what I end up wanting to show that this is equal to um, when I take, so what I want to do is take the uh, flat and then take the Hodge star and show that this is equal to D of F flat. Okay, so if I write out what, um, what the left hand side is, I'm getting Hodge star composed with flat composed with sharp, composed with Hodge star of D of F flat is equal to D of F flat. So it doesn't matter what um, F is. If I can show just that, um, oh, sorry, this um, sharp should have been a Hodge star. So if I can show that Hodge star composed with flat, composed with sharp, composed with Hodge star is the identity, then I'm good. So let's try and show this. So um, flat and sharp are, are inverses. So this is just Hodge star composed with Hodge star. And then on your homework, what you're going to show is that Hodge star composed with Hodge star is negative 1 to the k times n minus k times the identity. 
So all that I need to show is that um, this k times n minus k is even. Here, k, okay, so um, this is when I put a k form in here. So here, I'm applying Hodge star to D of F flat. So F flat is a one form. So D of F flat is a two form. So I'm applying Hodge star to a two form. So two times three minus two is equal to two, which is even. So negative one to the uh, K times N minus K is even. So, or sorry, it's, uh, it's one. So I get the identity as I wanted to. Um, as I said, you're going to show this identity on your homework. So the fact that the curl is equal to um, this thing. And if you want to, you can either look at Fortney or on your own, check this that this square commutes in coordinates. So, um, so it's, it's not very hard. It's just a little bit messy. Um, the final thing to check is this last square. So what we need to show here is that Hodge star of the divergence of a, of a vector field is equal to D of um, Hodge star of the flat of a vector field. So I think it's probably, I mean, there's also a coordinate free way to do this, but it's probably easier to just do this with coordinates. Um, so if I compute the left hand side, the Hodge star of the divergence of F is the Hodge star of dp dx plus dq dy plus dr dz, which is equal to, if you go back to the Hodge star video, this is just, you put a, uh, multiply the function by dx wedge dy wedge dz. Whereas the right hand side um, is equal to D of the Hodge star of F flat. So that will be P dx plus Q dy plus R dz. And if I take the Hodge star of dx, I get dy wedge dz. If I take the Hodge star of dy, I get negative dx wedge dz. And if I take the um, Hodge star of dz, I get um, dx wedge dy. So we computed this first um, Hodge star of dx is equal to dy wedge dz in the Hodge star video, and you can compute the rest on your own. So now when I take d of this, this is dp dx plus dq dy, because I'm going to need to move my dy one over, and then plus dr dz dx wedge dy wedge dz, which is exactly what I have on the left-hand side. Okay, so everything um, commutes, so that's great. So one thing, another thing you might remember from multivariable calculus is that you knew that, or you probably showed that curl of the gradient is always zero and the divergence of the curl is always zero. Well, it's actually quite easy to show these two things using our diagram. So if we go back up here, I will move this diagram down. And let's do the first one. So curl composed gradient is zero. So curl composed gradient goes this way. So I take the gradient and then I take the curl. Um, but instead I could go this way. Because the diagram commutes, um, I get the same thing. Now you might be asking, okay, well the the um, map star composed with flat just went down. It doesn't go back up. But all of these vertical maps are isomorphisms and star composed with flat inverse is flat inverse composed with star inverse, which in this case is just sharp composed with star. So I get that the, the great curl of a gradient is zero. Similarly, the divergence of a curl is zero. So if I start here now, and I go there, because the diagram commutes, that's the same thing as going like that. 
And in this case, um, star inverse in this red case is negative star. So you just have to work through um, this. Uh, you just have to work through this identity here. Sorry, I need to include this when k is equal to three. Okay, so the last thing is to talk about the major theorems of um, calculus. So the fundamental theorem of line integrals told us that the integral over a curve of um, a gradient is equal to the integral over a curve of, or sort of the, the sum over the endpoints of the curve of the, the function itself. So I can rewrite fundamental theorem of line integrals sort of in this um, the framework of these differential forms, differential one forms and zero forms. And what I end up getting is I'm integrating, so I'm just writing, now I'm writing this as a differential one form, the integral of a differential one form over a curve. So this is a notation that we have that's defined. And this is just equal to um, the integral over the boundary of the curve of F, which this is, okay, this is kind of something that, that I talked about in the previous video that doesn't really make sense, but I'm thinking of it the integral over the boundary of a curve of f, the integral over a, like a zero manifold of a function is just f of sort of the top or sort of the positive endpoint of c minus f over the negative endpoint. Um, Stokes theorem. So I'm going to be looking sort of at what Stokes, so Stokes theorem lives up here, right? I'm thinking about what it would look like under these isomorphisms down here. So I can take the integral over the surface, over a surface of the um, Hodge star of the flat of the curl of, a, of F. And that is equal to um, the integral over the boundary of S, remember to use the orientations correctly, of um, just taking F flat. So starting with my vector field here. And the divergence theorem um, shows me that, so the divergence theorem is rewritten in terms of these differential forms, not in terms of functions and vector fields. I can rewrite the divergence theorem as the integral over the region of the Hodge star of the divergence of a vector field as the integral over the boundary of a region of the Hodge star of the flat of that vector field. Um, and the important thing to realize is that um, instead of writing these as using gradient curl and divergence, I can rewrite the left-hand side to be, in this first case, just the integral over the curve of df. Um, because df is equal to, so like df is equal to flat of gradient. And I can rewrite the integral um, over the surface of the flat of the curl as the integral over the surface of d of f flat. Because if I take the curl, then I take the flat and the Hodge star, that's the same thing as taking the flat and then d. And finally, I can rewrite the star of the divergence. So star of divergence is the same thing as taking um, flat then star then d. So this is equal to the integral over r of d of um, star of f flat. So what all of these theorems look like in the end is they look like something integral over some region, d of some differential form. Uh, maybe instead of writing differential form here, I'll write alpha, d of alpha. So alpha can be various things. Is equal to the integral over the boundary of the region of alpha. So that's what we're gonna prove in the last week of the semester.